So I'm in New York City and I'm dyslexic. Dyslexia has a lot to do with the term decoding. If you are a human and you live in the modern world, which is literally every person watching this video right now, your life is decoding. Our world is made up of symbols, a bunch of symbols that don't inherently mean anything. Like, look at this symbol. This symbol means something to you only because it's been given meaning by our society or your culture or your language. But what about this symbol? A lot of you have no idea what this symbol means. It doesn't mean anything to you, but to others it does. Look at that happy woman. It wasn't some like hip little joint. It wasn't like a five dollar pork bun? Yeah, that's like just trying to be too showy. Yeah, it's like the real deal. Yeah. Alright, let's go eat these. I mean, your whole school experience is one giant lesson in decoding books and symbols and images to give meaning and knowledge to your brain. If you're dyslexic, this whole decoding thing is hard, especially when it gets really advanced. Like you have pages and pages of all of these random symbols and you're supposed to make meaning out of them. That's really difficult for someone who has dyslexia. I'm gonna stop using fancy language here and just say it straight. If you're dyslexic, you suck at reading. If you look at a page, most people are able to single out these lines and track along them, quickly and seamlessly decoding the words into meaning. When I look at a page like this, my brain sees something a little bit more like this. Tracking along these lines is just a really clunky process for me. Oh, man, that's a downer. A year ago we were in Hong Kong for orders and my birthday and then this year we're in Taiwan and we're just falling in love with this food. Don't you think? Hello? Okay. So what does this all mean? Well, being a dyslexic child, you just kind of feel not very smart. At least I didn't. There was always special meetings I had to have with my teacher and my parents to like come up with alternative learning schedules and like big learning goals and all of these things that basically made me feel like, look, you're not getting this. What this did is it kind of instilled this idea that like, okay, I'm not one of the smart kids and that's okay. I actually made peace with this. By the time I was in middle school, you really start to have to read a lot more. And so that's where my mom started to read to me like these longer books, which was really embarrassing when you're like an eighth grader and your mom's reading to you. Thank you, mom. Seriously though, so sweet. My mother then would go out and find audiobooks when I was in high school. You know, this wasn't like a long time ago, but you know, it's in the 2000s when audiobooks were on cassettes. All this is to say my mother is lovely and so, so, so supportive and wonderful and really helped me through this. And none of us knew that it was dyslexia. Like during this time, I just knew I wasn't good at reading and I wasn't, quote, very smart. So I made it through high school, didn't get great grades, didn't get good test scores, but like made it through. College was my nightmare. I mean, college was fun, I liked college, but for the reading aspect, college was a nightmare for someone with dyslexia. I still don't know I'm dyslexic, I just know that I hate reading. And in college, everything is about reading. You devour these textbooks, you come and discuss what you read, and it's like hundreds of pages of reading a night. That was just never, ever gonna happen to me. So, this is where I start to develop creative solutions to get my way around reading. So I start to record the lectures from my professors, like the classes, I would record them and listen to them over and over again while I would like go on runs or while I was like walking up to campus or whatever it was. And 
This way I was able to let the content sink in, but not have to do the 50 or 60 pages of reading. Not the best solution, but definitely the only solution I had at my fingertips to get through a lot of these heavy, heavy reading classes in college. Incidentally, I also had an issue with writing. Because I didn't do a lot of reading, I wasn't a super good writer. I was not a very good typist, couldn't spell super well. And so my second kind of creative solution was starting to lean into visuals as my way of presenting things. So instead of like writing a paper for a project, I would say like, hey, can I like make a video about it? Or can I like do like an infographic or something like that? And on the other side of college, what I came away with is that I could learn. I just wasn't gonna do it in the traditional way. I was gonna be doing it through these creative solutions of finding other alternative ways of ingesting information and sharing that information or communicating that information. And then I go into a neurologist at George Washington Medical Center in DC and get officially diagnosed. Which doesn't mean anything. There's no like medicine or like therapy for dyslexia. What it means though is that you're suddenly validated in like, okay, I'm not just not smart or like I'm not just not disciplined with books. I actually have something wrong with my brain. And that was incredibly freeing for me, I think, or at least validating. All right, pause, 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 everyone pause, pause. It's time for an ad because, well, gotta feed my family somehow, right? Very 1950s of you. Well, you feed our family too. Together, we will feed our family with internet ads. I'm gonna tell you the rest of the story, but for this video, I reached out specifically to Audible, which is a company that I use and have used for many years. Back in like, I think it was, you know, the early 2010s when I started to discover Audible. And that's when I started to devour, devour audiobooks. I started to average 25 books a year, which it was like from a guy who would read one book a year, suddenly I'm reading 25 books a year, like, this changed my entire life. Audible, in case you don't know, is this giant repository of audiobooks. This app has been like an integral part of my world. So many books. One that I, I just read uh, is about India. It's called Midnight's Furies. It is an amazing book. I'm just finishing it now and it um, has really informed a lot of my writing and thinking about India lately. Very informative, very well written, very detailed. So if you're interested in Audible, you can go to this link, audible.com slash Johnny Harris, and you can get a 30 day free trial where you get a book, any book you want for free, and you get two Audible originals, which is like content that they've created themselves that you can pick from like a big, repository. The ad is over. Thank you for listening. I'm now here in Lower Manhattan at the Vox office. We're here because Iz is hosting this event for Eater tonight because of her Taiwan stuff. And I'm just plus oneing. I'm just hanging out. I'm going to finish this story of what dyslexia looks like when you're in your 20s and now in my early 30s. Um, but I have to go up and say hi to my teammates and hang out and get some work done. But I'll, uh, I'll pick it up in a minute. Um, I, well, the battery kind of died on the f camera and just, I got, I just, I just got too busy eating Taiwanese food at that eater event. Good great is. No, seriously, she did. I'm gonna finish this story about dyslexia and what that means for me as, like, a 31-year-old person. Um, so let's get out of here, go into the city, and continue the story. And bagels, this is one of our favorite spots, if not our total favorite spot in the city for bagels. It's called Brooklyn Bagel on 8th Ave in Manhattan. It's lovely. Okay, so we're talking my current life with dyslexia, which is a very different life than school and university. During school and university days, dyslexia basically exacerbated the reality that I was not good at learning in, an, in a formal environment and just made it drudgery and 
difficulty all the time. Now that I'm in the real world, where reading books and, and taking tests and jumping through like formal hoops is not the measure of success, I find it much, much easier to feel like I'm smart and that I can be successful. Taking multiple choice tests is not the measure of success in the real world. In my 20s and now into my early 30s, I feel like dyslexia, yeah, is a big part of my life and it affects my day-to-day -day experience to some degree, meaning when I'm like looking at a list of things and I'm supposed to like find a name or a number or something, I like sometimes literally cannot find it, like I cannot see it even though it's like right there. But it doesn't affect my ability to have a successful career or to learn things or to have good relationships or any of those things that are to me just way more important than multiple choice tests. If anything, dyslexia and the experience of having to find creative solutions to my problems in school has made me a more resourceful person in the sense that typical mechanisms for learning and doing things don't work for me all the time. And so I've gotten used to and comfortable with finding alternative solutions, usually creative solutions to make things happen. And I think that's armed me with some really useful tools when it comes to making, making videos or building things or executing or whatever. So if anything, I feel like dyslexia, while it is a, a mental kind of hindrance in some ways, it also has given me tools that I'm really grateful for. I don't know what dyslexia feels like for other people. I'm sure it's not exactly the same as it, what it feels like for me, but I would be really curious to hear your thoughts on that. So if you are someone who struggles with dyslexia, um, tell me about it. Like, tell me what your experience is like, because I'm really interested to hear that. Okay, we're headed back to DC. More borders editing, borders is coming out really soon. Holy smokes, is this show? It's coming out. When is your show coming out? July, July, July. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Audible, for sponsoring this video and for teaching me how to listen to books. And I'll see you next time.